You seem awfully chipper, Velvet. I'm fine. And I guess I have you to thank as well. Perhaps. But gratitude doesn't suit you. Now, say ah! Uh. Huh? I need to see your teeth! I made a hundred gold bet that you'd break, remember? So, I need to see if you've broken anything. Let's start with those teeth. Help us out, kiddo. All right. I just need to check our front teeth, right? Front teeth, canines, whatever. Just get in there and take a good hard look. You didn't mean that literally, did you? Why are you making Fee do the checking? Acting the innocent maiden, are we? Well, I suppose that some say that showing the inside of your mouth can be more personal than being seen naked. What? Seriously? Nagilu, you're only making this even more awkward. Come now, will you cooperate or not? We can't settle the bet until we know the tooth! Fine, but let's check the ones in my left hand first. Good, I believe Bienfu can assist with that. Why me? Leave me out of this! Bien! She's squeezing me! Ouch! Those fangs hurt! <laughs> Looks like Velvet is just fine. Yeah, the sparks returned to her eyes. But, uh... Is showing the inside of your mouth really that embarrassing? What? Keep your intrusive questions to yourself! The size of the art that created this place. Just what is the Abbey planning to use it for? Whatever it is, they're trying hard to keep it hidden. Can't be anything good. Hey, who was that kid anyway? He and I used to be tethered to an exorcist named Lady Teresa. He was number one, I was number two. Oh, -ho, a friend of yours then. So he went feral after that Teresa lady fell. Yeah. I found Velvet and the others, but he probably had nowhere to go. A stray Moloch stripped of his free will won't go much further than a demon's belly. Anyway, seems like the only people I run into these days are kids. I'm more in the market for an unattached woman with a pretty face. Um, sorry? <laughs> I'm just fooling around. Grow a sense of humor, kid. Anyway, relax. I'll keep an eye on him until he's in command of himself again, all right? Just one more reason to bring the Abbey down. Right. Thanks, Savid. Luffy said, can you think of a good name for the kid? You're giving number one a name? Yeah, he says he can't remember his true name and calling him by a number seems mean, you know? Yeah, I was really happy when Velvet gave me my name. Hey, I've got this. How about Hajime? It means the first and he's number one, right? In that case, why not just go with Ichiro? No way, that was Shigure's childhood name. Why should that matter to us? It should be softer. How about Ichi? Or maybe something like Numbi? Numbi? Where'd that one come from? It's like number, but uh, more cute. Let's just forget that one. I don't think we should reference his old number at all. Um, how about Bob? Uh, is that just because of his hairstyle? That's really reaching. 
Actually, I kind of like it. If it's too plain, how about Bobby? Hmm, that isn't bad. Right? Then number one is hereby renamed... Stop it, you two! You don't understand it at all! A boy doesn't want a name that sounds cute! You... you don't think so? That was quite an outburst. <laughs> the kid has a point. We need something with more panache. How about Silva? Silva? His hair and pendant are both silver. I like it. It's got a certain mystique about it. Silva. Yeah, it sounds cool. Well, if his old buddy Laffy said approves, then Silva it is. Well done, first mate. Praise from you is wasted on me. Huh. <laughs> then consider it praise from Silva instead. Right. Time to go give him the good news. Hey! The Moloch formerly known as Number One. You've got a new name. I'm glad he got a good name. Maybe we should have put a little more thought into naming you, too. That's all right. You need to steer your own ship. Right, Aizen? You're the one who taught me that. <laughs> you know just what to say, don't you? Moloch formerly known as Number Two. <laughs> Magilu, what were you up to while we were lost in the Earth Pulse? I was ringing the bell. The rift was open the whole time. Couldn't you hear me? I don't remember hearing any bells. She was fighting with Lord Melchior. She really gave it her all. Bianfu, don't give him the wrong impression. But you endured so much. It was... it was so moving. Yes, yes, I did endure. It was so hard not to laugh. Did the old man tell you a joke or something? It was a staring contest, and oh, the faces that old man can make. I kept picturing him as a young man, but with that same wrinkled face, and it was so hard not to crack. <laughs> I needed to keep myself in check. My desire to laugh was only broken by the ringing of the bell. Clang! Crash! What a thrill! Wait, was that the only thing that broke Mogilu? Are you asking if he broke my heart? Like I'm fishing for sympathy? That's not what I meant at all! You stood watch over the Earth Pulse Rift for us. I didn't say that! Stop trying to give me a participation medal! Just take it. After all, you don't care either way, right? True that. Looks like it's been captured. Just like the Therians. But why would they hold a dragon captive? Hmm. An art connects this place to the Earth Pulse. That's probably why we were taken here. Earth Pulse. So it's got something to do with Enominot? That would be the obvious conclusion. I don't get it. Explain. Small words. Very well. You're part of all this, too. Velvet. I'm fine now. I promise. All right. I see. You found out Inominat's true identity. So, now that you know, can you still fight him? It's only given me more reason to kill him. And the Shepherd. You're one ice-cold girl. There's still one thing bothering me. Inominat needs to eat malevolence to awaken. Once he does, he'll use his power to suppress negative emotions. But when humans can't create any more malevolence, what will happen to Inominat? He'll run out of things to eat. And maybe die? Hmm. Wouldn't he just go back to sleep? But if he does, then his power will fade and humanity will start creating malevolence again, right? In order for Inominat to eternally suppress negative emotions... He needs an infinite, powerful source of malevolence to feed off of. For example, that produced by an immortal dragon. Which would make this place a sort of dragon farm, created so he could control humanity forever. You can't be serious! 
Just speculation, but it all makes sense. They can't think of Malakim as anything but tools. Just how much will they sacrifice for their ideal world of tranquility? We don't dare free it. It'd be too dangerous. I know. Damn the Abbey and their twisted morality. <sighs> what was it that I believed in all that time? The image I'd built of the Abbey is crumbling from the bottom up. Please cheer up, Madam Eleanor! You'll make me depressed, too! Is this about the dragon farm? Yes. I strongly doubt even the Abbey has the power to manipulate dragons so freely. Then that dragon... Wasn't a dragon before it came here? That's the natural assumption. They probably brought the Malakir as a captive, then turned him into a dragon. Just like Melchior did, eh? Is there no line they won't cross? I don't know what to say. It's not your fault, Madam Eleanor! But spawning dragons in addition to Therians... Do you think they'll figure out a way to make humans, too? Yes. Wait, that's awful! I can't believe you went there! once your sister's child, right? Then my father is... Look, you were reborn, right? Yeah. Honestly, I really don't know anything about how being reborn works. But to me, what you see, what you hear, and what you feel, that's what's important. Whoever we used to be in another life, I'm me now, and you're you. That's all there is to it. Velvet. That's true. Aizen said that not all Malakim are humans who have been reborn, right? Does that mean they could be reincarnations of birds or fish or beasts? That's not, 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 not true! So, if a boy was a dog in a past life, that wouldn't make him part of the dog's family now. Yeah. I'm me, I guess. But you're Velvet's cute little pup, aren't ya? Mogilu. Be careful. I bite. I take it all back, just don't bite me! Rebirth is like the Earth in Historia. You're simply built on a larger foundation. But that's not special. Everyone's lives are founded on the past. So, I'm just me. Yep, you're you and no one else. You're Fee. Hey, first mate. Who is that horned demon with the old man? I don't know. I thought I felt something different about him. If only for just a moment. Did you feel it too? I said, I don't know. I see. <laughs> You're impossible, you know that? We've come across him before, but we never really fought him. My guess is Melchior is controlling him with some sort of illusion. I see. Then it's probably good you didn't fight. A straight battle against him wouldn't be an easy thing. How do you know that? Intuition. I have a nose for these things. There's something fishy about him. That scar on his face... It couldn't be. What's the matter, Aizen? You've gone pale. Forget it. It's nothing. We need to get out of here. Let's go.
I came here by ship. It's anchored by the southeast beach. Don't get over here! Oh, 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 Victory is up. What happened? <laughs> we used to play tag all the time. I won't let you get away, Velvet. You know me not! That was the whole reason I took him from Teresa. It's just another necessary sacrifice for peace. <gasps> Inominat, you monster! Inominat to the front of us, a dragon to the back of us. Reaper's curse doesn't begin to describe it. What a shame. Is that despair, I sense? Not on your life! It'll take more than this to make your big sister break. The more you resist, the more you'll suffer. Velvet! Let me punish this rotten little delinquent. You're just a Malak. You don't stand a chance. I'm not just any Moloch. And I'm sick of murdering scum like you! I know no limits! For I am Sabine! Sabine! This is officially too damn much. We'll be fine. Take them out one by one! Save your regrets for later. We're dead if we don't focus. Bring it. Here, please! You broke me! Hear your justice! Fighting order! Let her rip and land! Crash through! Down the water! No mercy! Wounds I won't see! Fighting the other! Make my bed!
I told you you would suffer. Safid. I'll hold off you know me not. Everyone else, take out that dragon. There's no way you can face him alone. At least let me assist you. This isn't an order. It's strategy. I'm counting on you, Fee. For something that's a mere part of me, you're awfully uppity. I am the Mala Lafisette! I miscalculated before. I won't hold back this time. And neither will we! Nothing has changed! We're still in the same bind! V is trying to become someone new. It's a gamble. I bet. Me too. You stay out of this. The dumb coin only lands on skull. Then you'll just have to flip it over for me. Not happening. We're going to the jackpot. Oh, stop! <laughs>
Struggling even to protect yourself. <laughs> if you apologize now, I'll make sure it doesn't hurt when I devour you. No way I'm apologizing! Not to some jerk who doesn't understand how Velvet feels! And you're saying that you do? She's my sister. I know everything, but I won't tell you! So be it. If I devour you, we'll be one again anyway! The compass! She isn't! Yours! Velvet is Velvet! And you're just a fragment of me! Guys, look out! No! So that was your strategy. Hey! Give us more warning! You almost roasted us alive! You've really done it now! I'll turn you into a dragon. See who's left in What's going on? The malevolence burned away? We're leaving! Hurry! <laughs> They got away. A silver flame. A strange art that Malak used. Did you forget that you have the power to digest malevolence? That thing may be a fragment, but it's still part of you. But the dragon attacked me. If it hadn't disrupted my concentration like that, I never would have let my fragment lay a finger on me. So long as you learn from your mistake, such a ruse won't work a second time. After all, Malakim are mere servants of the Empyreans. As long as we stay wary, they pose no threat to our ideal world. Your awakening is nearly complete. None within your domain can stand against you without the power of the four elemental Empyreans. And they are fast asleep, far beneath the Earth pulses. I'm going after them. No, not now. We need to make preparations for the ceremony of suppression. We'll send this one after them instead. A demon? Will he be reliable? True, he can be hard to control. Even after he succumbed to demonhood, he withstood my illusions for seven days and nights. Even now, he resists on an instinctual level. However, he used to be known as the most fearsome pirate in all the seas. His strength is equal to any legates. You, capture the Therion Velvet. Do whatever you have to, as long as you keep her alive. Wait. First... First, kill him. Kill Lafisette. Before my sister's eyes. He's the only thing keeping her from falling to despair. 
It's true. Demon or not, he still possesses an odd sort of pride. I'll have to relieve him of such a meaningless burden. Well, that made for good training, at least. We fought an Armatus, an Empyrean, and a Dragon. It's a miracle we're still alive. It's all thanks to Fee. He's still asleep. He must have used all his physical and mental strength. <sighs> a fire that burns away malevolence. That's quite the talent he's got there. Is it because he's part of Inomi Not? Sure could be. In one sense, that's a lucky break for us. But on the other hand... <sighs> anyway, I lost that bet. And I was so sure I was gonna win, too. Awful lot of drama you're making over 100 gold. Don't you dare laugh off 100 gold! One with no respect for gold will be by 20 lions mauled. Everyone knows that. Right. Anyway, what do we do next? Nothing's changed. We seal Inomi not away and kill Artorius. Even if Inomi not has awakened, there must be a way to seal him back again. Our best lead is still Grimoire's ancient book. We should meet up with Benwick and the others. Are you sure you want to stay with us? I don't know if it's the right choice or not. But I refuse to believe Lord Artorius is right. That sacrifices are inevitable bumps on the road to a better world. That's why I'll do what I believe is right and fight him. Even if I'm wrong, I won't have any regrets. Do you have any idea how frustrating you are? Here one to talk. Aizen, get in touch with Benwick and the others. That demon. It had to have been. Aizen? I think we need a break more than anything. That was a long stretch of battle. Seconded. Besides, the boy and Zavid aren't waking up anytime soon. Let's find a place to sleep for tonight. Eleanor. Look after Lafayette. Maybe you ought to carry him. He did all this for you. Please. Very well. You could at least carry the poor kid. Damn, you're cold. No, quite the opposite. I'm glad you didn't win that bet, Mogilu. Sure, you're glad, but what witch would be happy at losing? And you pampered Velvet like crazy! It's your fault I lost. Really? I don't remember doing anything. Nope, wasn't us. <sighs> Staying out of it is just as bad. If you don't throw salt or sugar into an open wound, you're guilty of being too nice! I lost the bet because of you. You owe me. In that case, let us get in on the action. Let's make another bet. Oh? I'm listening. I'll bet 10,000 gold that Velvet cracks. Oh. I'll make that same bet. 10,000. Uh-huh. Hey! Wait a minute! You both know that I'm the one who wants to bet that she cracks! Then you should have spoken up first. We can call the whole thing off if you want. No, no. What kind of gambler would I be if I back down now? I'm afraid I have to take that bet. I hereby bet 10,000 that Velvet doesn't crack! <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? For someone so stubborn, you can be surprisingly cute sometimes. You're calling a witch cute? That's slander! You both owe me the money you bet as reparations! <laughs> So, should I think of you as my sister? I'm a Moloch named Ceres. I've inherited Selica's memories, that's all. 
And that doesn't make you the same person? What exactly defines a person's identity? I may have her body and her memories, but... <sighs> You're right. If your soul has changed, you're not the same person anymore. Even if I were Selica, I don't have the right to be called your sister. I followed Artorius's orders without question, sacrificing my own flesh and blood. What about me? I devoured you. I have no right to condemn you for what you've done. There's a difference, Velvet. I wanted you to do it. Even had I survived, I would have given myself to you before long. I wanted you to have my power, no matter the cost. But why? Right after the advent, Selica's memories returned to me. <laughs> it was then I understood what exactly it was I had done. Arthur, kind and caring, transformed into the cruel Artorius he is now. Why did your memories return? I don't know. I've heard that very rarely Malakim can regain the memories of their previous lives. Or perhaps this is my punishment for the pain I brought to you all. The stronger I feel my love for Arthur, the less I can forgive Artorius. My hatred of him has grown so deep I'm not Selica anymore. As Ceres, I can never bring back the Arthur that I loved. Neither do I have the power to defeat Artorius. But you can. You're a Therian. You fully absorbed my power. You can face the Shepherd. I know. I will stop him. Forgive me, Velvet. I've pushed everything onto you. My hatred, my determination. I wanted to apologize one last time, at the end. I'm glad I had a chance to know you. I'm glad that once I could be Luffy's sister. And Selica and Arthur's sister as well. I was happy. Velvet. Should you be up so soon? Yeah, but... Stay back! <gasps> it's finally come to this. But of course it did. After all, I chose my revenge over a world of peace. I can't complain if people call me the Lord of Calamity. Velvet, whether you're human, demon, or Lord of Calamity, doesn't change that you have beautiful hair. Luffy said the same thing to me a long time ago. He gave me this comb. Your heart, I can tell it aches. Yes. But even still, no, because of that, I've made up my mind. I'm going to settle things with Artorius and Inominat, once and for all. It must be done. For my sake, and for the sake of those I loved. I will too. Even without my compass, I'll place my hand on the wheel and chart my own course. I will defeat Artorius. But if I kill Inominat, Lafayette, and me and the other Therians, they'll all. A compass. Hmm.
Aizen! Why the hell didn't you say something? Hmm. Calm down. You were passed out at the time, okay? <laughs> I'm going. I've gotta stop him! What's going on? We got a message from the Von Eltia. That's great. Is everyone okay? Yeah. For now. Huh? While Benwick and the others were making their getaway, they got word that Eifried was spotted in Endgan. They said they're on their way to Lionel Island to meet him. That has to be... Yes, a trap. No doubt set by that horned demon, who may even be Eifried himself. Eifried is a demon? Are you serious? I said may. Let's head to Lionel Island. Whoever it is, it's a lead. Besides, we can't afford to lose the Von Eltia. How will we get there? Zavid probably sailed off with the ship we came in on. We'll steal one from the harbor. I may be a calamity, but I'm frugal. Curse it all. If only I'd notice sooner. How about this one? The hull looks dirty, and I don't see anyone aboard. You're surprisingly into this. Maybe you've got a criminal streak in you after all. What? No, I... What do you think, Aizen? She'll do. Let's take her. Everything all right? We're almost at Lionel Island, all thanks to this ship. She's got a good compass. Yeah. If only my inner compass held us steady. From the first moment I laid eyes upon that demon, I think I knew it was Eifried. But some part of me refused to accept it. That's because you're Eifried's friend, don't you think? After all, he taught you that the Reaper's curse was part of you part of your creed. We were lost at sea once. Twenty straight days we floated together, close to death. And all he says is, you sure know how to liven up an adventure. He sounds like an incredible person. You did the same thing for Velvet, you know. Only because you taught me how, Aizen. Your wheel is yours to hold, right? That's right. That's what it is to live by one's... Look! It's Lionel Island! Not good. The Von Eltia's already there. <sighs> We're too late. Eleanor! What's going on? What happened? A horned demon attacked us out of nowhere! They're breathing. Barely. Zavid rushed here to save us. Had he not come when he did, we'd all be dead. This is all because I hesitated. Where'd they go? Zavid lured the beast away, towards the interior. Let's go!
Is that demon really Eifried? Eisen would know better than anyone, so I'd take it as a fact. But I thought when people have a strong will like you and Kurogane, they don't lose themselves upon becoming a demon. From how Eisen talks about him, I'd say his strength of will should be considerable. Even if you don't lose yourself, a demon is a demon. When you change, you're no longer human. I don't remember how I felt as a human, but I bet the human me would have thought I'm a real monster. <sighs> but would the old part of Eifried allow him to be so obedient to the Abbey? No. He didn't seem to be following Melchior of his own free will. I imagine Melchior's illusory arts are at play. Like what we saw at Loringen in a ball? Is that enough to control a demon? They would seem so. But more importantly, someone with a psyche resilient enough to impress Aizen should be extraordinarily hard to turn into a demon. So Melchior must be using a particularly nasty illusion, eh? Eifried, Aizen, please be okay. We have to hurry! Zavid's all alone! Well, he's not exactly an ally. He's got his own creed. Remember the white horned dragon? He might try to protect Eifried. So Aizen might too, right? This is Eifried we're talking about, so... He's a demon now. He's not Aizen's old buddy anymore. <sighs> Even if we can't bring him back to being human, there has to be something we can do to make him... himself again. If he's a demon, he'll never be himself again. He attacked Benwick and the rest of his crew. The old Eifried's gone. So, what does Eisen plan to do? I don't know. That's up to him. Worst case, we might have to fight him too. It's best you prepare yourself for that possibility. But... Zavid! You all right? Stop! I know these fists. This is Eifried. Why didn't you fight back? Eifried... She pulled me back from the brink. <laughs> I owe him. This time, it's my turn to bring him back. A demon can never be human again. <laughs> so what? It's supposed to make me change my creed? What do you think, I freed? Savid! <laughs> After kids now. <sighs> Benwick and your crew risked their lives by your side. Zavid's an idiot, but he stands by his beliefs. I won't let anyone trample their creeds. Even you! I owe you everything, Eifried. And now, 
It's time to pay it back! Are you all right with this, Aizen? Let's settle this! Easier said than done! Ready to die? Think you can dodge? Just a try! Perfect mayhem! Hostages now. I'm sorry. Just forget about me. I'm I'm prepared for whatever happens. All right. You've grown. You're a man now. Family, friends, everything I ever tried to hold on to, all of it trickled away fell from my grasp. But a certain idiot once told me, if you can't hold something in your hand, then make a fist and take it by force. This fist will take everything back. Just like you told me to! Uh. Ah! Don't worry about it. We're friends, right? I freed! Demon changed back into a human?
Forget it. It's too late. I'm sorry. If I only knew how to use my power. Stop crying. Didn't you say you were prepared for anything? But, Aizen, you were searching for Eifried for so long. <sighs> You're still as soft as you ever were. Boy, I'll let you in on little secrets. Your power comes from being part of He Know Me Not. Which means, if you can seal off his domain, you actually got a chance of putting up a good fight. Seal off his domain? The four elemental Empyreans sleeping in the Earth pulses. If you can rouse them from their slumber. Hurry, while Artorius and Inominat are occupied. They're getting ready for some ceremony of suppression. It's now or never, kid. Thank you, Eifried. <laughs> I'm just sad I can't go with you. This sounds like a goddamn blast. I won't apologize. You shouldn't. I'm grateful. You always kept things from getting to home. If we ever meet again, let's raise some hell. Eisen. Yeah, we will. See you, Eifried. <sighs> I owe you one, Zavid. We had a chance to bring him back, but you went and killed him. Next time I see you, we'll settle the score. Between me and your creed. See you around, Zavid. So, we need to wake the four elemental Empyreans? But how do we do it? Dunno, maybe you tickle their divine footsies with a feather until they- You're back! And you're looking better. Somehow. But what happened to that demon? We killed him. Benwick. He- Let me tell him. The rest of you, find Grimoire and ask her about the four Empyreans. Aizen. Are you sure? Do it. He gave us this chance. We can't waste it. Okay. Resurrect the Elemental Empyreans. True. If we do that, we might be able to suppress Inominat's domain. It may even liberate the minds of the Malachim that Inominat has under his control. I'm sure some will no longer obey their exorcists. Good. We'll take a big bite out of their forces. More importantly, Inominat will lose the ability to enhance the resonance of his exorcists. Most exorcists will no longer even be able to perceive Malachim at all, just like before. Of course, anyone as innately gifted as me is another story. Will I... become unable to see Lafayette? We won't know until we try. Eleanor... Then let's give it a shot. I'll... accept whatever happens. But these elemental Empyreans... they're gods, right? You sure it's okay to disturb their beauty sleep? They control the four elements. Waking them is likely to upset the balance of the world quite a bit. I'll take that as a no, then. We don't even know how to revive them. At worst... If it's anything like the opening... Then we need to offer a sacrifice at the Earth Pulse on a Scarlet Night. We have to kill someone? The act of killing is not essential to the ceremony. All that's needed is a soul free of malevolence. 
Hmm. If that's true, then doesn't Velvet already have a whole belly full of them? The exorcists I devoured. It's perfect. You're a Therian. You're capable of releasing the power you absorb. The souls of the high-ranking exorcists you ate should do nicely. Use Oscar and Teresa's souls to resurrect the Empyreans? It's worth a try, at least. When's the next Scarlet Knight? Three years after the advent. In other words, soon. Hmm. Do we have enough time? The four Empyreans are asleep in different places, right? Correct. Four Earth Pulses for four Empyreans. But if you use a life pool, you may be able to awaken all four at the same time. A life pool? Earth Pulses normally flow horizontally, but in exceptionally rare cases, they can flow vertically. This causes energy to collect at the Earth Pulse's base, forming a life pool. Though sometimes the energy flows the other way, upward, into what's called a life spring. Ho-ho! Oh, so if we make use of one of these life pools, a single sacrifice could reach all four Empyreans. Where are they? There's a life pool in the northern reaches of Midgand. But I heard a large temple was built over it recently. That's the Empyrean throne! We can't go there, it's Inominat's home base! Ah, uh, most unfortunate. Couldn't we use a life spring? It all connects to the same place, right? We'll have to go against its flow, but... We'll force the soul right down its throat. Where's the nearest life spring? Our best bet would be Mount Killeraus. Aizen? I'm fine. What's done is done. Killeraus? That's the volcano on the northernmost tip of Northgand, but it's a hellscape of ice and lava! Naturally. Killeraus is the most powerful life spring there is. So, in short, we shove the souls of the Exorcists into the molten core of that volcano. That should awaken the four elemental Empyreans. Together, they will seal off Inominat's domain. It's just a theory, but... It's one I'll put my money on. Me too. Then we're off to Northgand. Mount Killeraus is north of Helleviz. The ship's ready to sail. Where are you headed? We don't have a problem. If you've got a grudge, we can settle it here and now. Huh? Why would we have a grudge against you guys? The first mate fought like the first mate. The captain died like the captain, right? I suppose. The no swabby here can blame you for what happened. We're Eifried's pirates, and don't forget it. We're not so pathetic that we need pity from some lord of calamity. All right. The ship's in your hands. Aye, aye. You can count on us. The Von Eltia looks the same as ever, but it feels utterly different, doesn't it? Yeah. Even Benwick looked like he'd been crying. I can imagine. But if we let ourselves despair now, we'd be a disgrace to Eifried's creed. We have to swallow our anger and grief, and sail on. Right. Following a creed isn't always pleasant. We must do what we must. I won't allow the Abbey to do things like this. Destroying someone like that, turning them into a puppet, it's unconscionable. Still, a heart can never be fully bridled. It can be shattered, but never erased entirely. Eifried proved that. Right. His body is gone, but he lives on through his crew. Magilu is right. What lives in one's heart can never be erased. Yeah, the heart is eternal. I see. Or a calcum or not, Stormquell snapped like a twig. I'm afraid so. It was Inominat who did it. But I think Shigure could have done the same. 
So hardness alone isn't enough. Forgive me. I thought I had found clarity, but it was only foolish pride. You should be proud. You are without a doubt the greatest swordsmith in the world. I'm looking forward to your next blade. Even now, you would still place your trust in me? Of course. Is there any other swordsmith who could craft a blade out of orichalcum? You're a master of your art. A visionary who spent centuries working to forge a blade of legend. I'm honored to know you. I don't know what to say. Unless, of course, you've given up on making a sword to surpass Storm Howl. <laughs> Does this look like the face of a man who's given up? Not in the least. <laughs> We're making good time. The only problem is that ceremony that Artorius was going on about. We don't know how long it'll take. Eifried said they called it the Ceremony of Suppression. Most likely, it's how Inominat plans to release his power. Most likely. He hasn't absorbed Lafayette in your despair. So we know me not should still be incomplete, but if his powers fully awaken... Humanity will be robbed of their free will! I can hear them celebrating now. The uglinesses of the human soul are suppressed! And the world is free of malevolence! Hurrah! Hurrah! Robbing humanity of its will... They'll be like I once was. Uh, something's coming! Guys, let's not fight! <laughs> this is a domain? fully sealed away yet. Rokuro, give him a good smacking. Wake him up! On it. Aizen! Got it. We'll put in at the nearest harbor. To Port Zexon! <laughs> ah! I feel like some jerk played tug of war with my brain. Dig up some spirit. They're trying to strip away your will. Oh no! Look! It's that merchant! You're all right! I do not deserve to be all right. I used people, stepped on them just to make a profit. 
I even aided wanted criminals so that I could expand my business. My soul is black with ugliness and can never be forgiven. Huh? No, wait! Stop! The world needs to be purified of malevolence. I don't belong here. I have to die. I have to die. I have to die. No, it's not right! Oh! You can die if you want, but saying you have to die is a good way to make my blood boil. Those awakened to their own malevolence seek to end their lives. Welcome to Artorias's uncompromising world of reason. First they steal humanity's rudder, and now they want to say who lives and who dies? We should find out what's happening here, unless you'd rather not see. You're right. I wouldn't. But I won't hide from the truth any longer. Before anything else, we'll need to confirm just how far his power reaches. Let's head to Logris. So this is the result of their ceremony of suppression. Seems that way. They've brought their peace to mankind. You know me not suppression. Is this the ideal world the Abbey envisions? Bien! There's no life in anyone's eyes! This isn't a fun place at all! It's not just people's minds being shackled. They're being forced to die, too. It's terrible. Why would dying be part of anyone's ideal world? Even under such strict control, new sins can still rise to the surface. If that happens, it's better to end the life of the sinner. Melchior came to the same logical conclusion. What utter rubbish. Anyway, we need to get to Logris. What's going to happen to the world? How far will Anominat's power spread? When his domain expanded, I felt a faraway power suddenly come closer. It was enough to blot out the whole sky. I'm sure it's covered other towns, too. His domain has certainly extended to at least the entire populace of this country. Otherwise, what would be the point? That means what happened at Port Zexen is happening... everywhere. Everyone is either a puppet, or... Dead by their own hands. Inominat created this ideal hell in a single moment. That's the power we're up against. So we few are standing against a truly monumental force. This is your last chance to turn back. Turn back to what, exactly? Forward or back, we're headed into hell either way. At least this way, I'll have my own free will. I'd prefer a living damnation to that oblivion. Well, don't come crying to me later. Let's move along, then. 